It's the final day of Perry Nice, and it will all be decided with an uphill time trial in the hills above the Mediterranean. Leader Richie Port will be the last man on the course, hoping to become the first Australian to ever win the race to the sun. It is the Epic Cycle Series presented by Michelob Ultra. The 71st edition of Perry Nice. They have covered 724 miles in the first seven days and now we're down to the final six, which are all uphill above the French Riviera. Steve Schlanger, Paul Sherwin, and Richie Port comes in with a comfortable, if not insurmountable, lead of half a minute on Andrew Talansky. The top 10 separated by just about one minute. And this time trial begins in the heart of Nice and starts climbing right away while heading east. Yeah, it's a very difficult time trial. You don't get to have very much chance to warm up the engine when you come out of the starting blocks. And it's a six mile climb up to the summit of Col d'Ez at around about 450 meters of altitude, which is 1,580 feet. It's uphill right from the start. It averages over four and a half percent with a maximum close to nine percent along the way. And earlier today, the man with the best time to this point, the Uscatel rider, Ion Izagir, coming in just ahead of the Frenchman, Jerome Coppel, a time of 2022. And as we come on the air, he is our leader on stage seven. This is the world champion, Philippe Gilbert. He is the 120th rider of 151 scheduled to start today. All of the riders going in one minute intervals until we get down to the final 15, and then they'll be separated by two minutes apiece. Well, this man has been uh, the uh, time trial champion of Belgium. Weather conditions today, 55 degrees Fahrenheit, a slight breeze at five miles an hour, but mostly cloudy over the top of this mountain of the Col d'Ez. I think he will try and test himself here this afternoon, Philippe Gilbert, very upset yesterday that he felt that he made a little bit of a mistake in that sprint down towards the end. He led out just too far from the finishing line and that probably cost him his first road win since he won the World Championships in September last year. This final time trial, the Col d'Ez in the hills above Nice has been a signature feature in this race over the years. In fact, it was the final stage between 1968 and 1995, went away for a while, came back last year for the first time in about a decade, and now a lot of the riders hope it continues to have its rightful place as the final day in the Race to the Sun. The reason for including this individual time trial on the final day of Paranese was to make it uh, just a little bit of a cliffhanger. And in the past, it has turned around on the last day. And Richie Porter asked uh, about whether or not he, he felt he had a, enough of a buffer. He said, well, as long as I've got a good day and Andrew Talansky doesn't, then I've got a good chance of winning Paranese overall. And Paul Talansky came into this time trial today saying even though he's trailing by half a minute, he feels good. And he feels like he can win the time trial today as Michael Albacini comes up to the finish line and stops the clock over two minutes behind. He's outside the top 70, but a good race for him because he was the winner on stage four here this week. And going back to Talansky, he says that it's not just going to be a good ride by him, but he's also going to need Port to falter in order to win the race overall. I think I would uh, agree with that. This is Ivan Basso who's tested himself uh, throughout the whole of this week of racing as he comes up to the line. That's the finishing line that was uh, always the finishing line many, many years ago when the uh, Coldez was included. He stops the clock. Not a bad ride for Ivan Basso. He's not the greatest time trialist. Uh, 21st place. Now Basso, the two-time Giro d'Italia champion, over 17 minutes down on the general classification, but his teammate Elia Viviani did wear the yellow jersey as overall race leader earlier in the week. It's a fairly steady climb once you move away from uh, Nice, uh, right down in the bottom, the old port, and it's just around the corner where the start is. Uh, let's have a look at the mid-check after five and a half kilometres. Ion Izagir, who has the fastest time at the finish line there, not surprisingly the fastest time at half distance as well, 12.08. It's a fairly steady climb, not many places where you can relax, catch your breath and recover. Actually, the flattest part of the entire course is the last kilometre and a half up near the top. And the time at the finish, Izagir, the current leader, at just over 20 minutes total. 
Philippe Gilbert out on course, said coming in that he was hoping to win at least one stage, didn't know what it might be, really went forward yesterday, but given the fact that time trialing is not his specialty, he won't win today, but he says he's in good condition for the Spring Classics, and that that's his major goal later on in the next month. You might just notice as well that uh, most of these riders are actually not adopting uh, an, an aerodynamic bicycle because it's an uphill time trial. They want to be more comfortable on the machine, get into a, more of a climbing position than an aerodynamic position. You might just have spotted Philippe Joubert. He's got some clip-on bars in the middle to try and get aero at certain points in the course. So the leaders on the general classification will be the last men on the course today. The start order determined by the reverse order of the GC. So the first shall be last today. Richie Porte, the overall leader, will be the last man on course. Ahead of him, Andrew Talansky, who trails by half a minute, and TJ Van Garderen also within a minute of the lead on the final day at Perry Nice. Coverage of Perry Nice on the NBC Sports Network is brought to you by Michelob Ultra. This is the year you stop saying, this is the year. By BMC Switzerland, manufacturers of the Grand Fondo GF01 the ultimate spring classics bike. See more at www.bmc-switzerland.com. And by X-Endurance, the greatest athletic discovery since tennis shoes. Philippe Gilbert cranking away on the Coldez. Perry Nice has finished some 30 times in its history on this infamous climb in the French Riviera region, southeastern France. And Gilbert's American teammate, TJ Van Garderen, well placed inside the top 10, inside of a minute back of overall leader Richie Port, Andrew Talansky, the highest placed of the Americans at 32 seconds behind. Eight Americans started this race, two have pulled out. And both Talansky and Van Garderen began with legitimate ambitions of finishing on the podium, and both can still get there. They certainly can. Uh, it's going to be a special ride for anybody, I think, to uh, dethrone Richie Port here this afternoon. But there's a huge battle for second and third place. Uh, the riders between uh, third and ninth are only separated by 22 seconds for the second and third spots. So Philippe Gilbert gets out of the saddle here and uh, he makes his way towards the summit of this climb. It's actually quite important for Gilbert to ride quite hard because his times out on the course can be communicated back down to the start line to TJ Van Garden. Riders will do that a lot in an individual time trial like this. They'll also try and explain to the teammates where the wind is a little bit easier where you can put it into a bigger gear to try and gain a few seconds here and a few seconds there later on you know if Andrew Talansky wants to pull back the deficit that he has on Richie Port he's gonna have to beat him by three seconds for every kilometer of this ascent and that I think is a very tall order and Richie Port will be able to compare his power output and his time to last year's winner, Brad Wiggins, who is his Sky teammate, who rode the climb in under 20 minutes. Of course, Wiggins electing the bypass Perry Nice this year, and that's why Richie Port came as the team leader. So that's some valuable information that the last man on the course wearing the yellow jersey will have today. It's that Team Sky, they're very, very scientific in their approach. Uh, everything is done with heart rate monitors, with watt rate monitors, so they can figure out how much wattage they can use on a climb for a certain period of time, and it all gets communicated back. The winning time last year, by the way, was 19 minutes and 12 seconds by Bradley Wiggins. The fastest time on the finishing line is currently 20.22, so I think we see a little bit shaved off that before the end of the afternoon. It's remarkable. Last year, Wiggins never got out of the arrow position, riding uphill the whole way. Now, Nero Quintana of the Movistar team sitting just outside the top 20. A 23-year-old Colombian. Pleasant surprise so far at Perry Nice after seven wins a season ago. Yes, but uh, when we really noticed him was when he won the Tour de l'Avenir, or the Race for the Hopefuls, which is organized by the same organization as Perry Nice here and the Tour de France. You might have noticed he came straight out of the starting ramp, you turn left, and you're straight onto the incline. Now, I would expect a very good ride from this young man, because as far as I'm concerned, he is going to be a great star of the future, and his uh, pedigree is climbing. And something that is different this year, as in years past for the Coldez Uphill Time Trial, is the fact that they do start climbing right away. Back in the 80s when they rode this on the final stage of Perry Nice, there was about a kilometer or so of flat roads before the climbing started, but he came out of that start house and was immediately going uphill. Yeah, you might look at it and say, well, what are these guys actually racing for today? Because it's only six miles as we go up to the finishing line, and this is the arrival of Tony Gallopin. 24-year-old Frenchman, hasn't won since 2011, 
And riding for the Radio Shack team now, he's going to come in just inside the top 10 at 50 seconds behind our leader, Ion Izagir. Yep, he's a good sprinter, Tony Gallopin. He uh, got his chance uh, yesterday. He got himself uh, inside of the top 10 on the running down towards the finishing line. But yes, so you might just see the port in the background there, and that is where the race used to start in the 1980s. This is back uh, looking at the back wheel of Nairo Quintana. And as I say, it'll be interesting to see what time he posts when he gets to the halfway mark because he is an exceptional climber. We'll see a lot and talk a lot more about this rider further down the season. And Paul, you also have to make the distinction between a pure climber and a good uphill time trialist because it's not always the same. No, it certainly isn't. Uh, you've got to be explosive and you've got to be able to hold that effort in an individual time trial. We're looking here at Igor Silin from Russia. 24-year-old who won a stage of the Sun Tour a couple of years ago. And he's just outside the top five. Pretty good ride at over 21 minutes. Yeah, he's another youngster coming out of Russia. It's amazing how many young riders have been participating here at this race here at Paris-Nice. And the current standings with Ion Izagir posting the fastest time so far. All of the top riders on the general classification still to come in this 151 rider field. 184 started Perry Nice a week ago today. And now we're down to just 151 on this seventh stage and the eighth day of racing. As we pick up Nero Quintana, early portion of his climb. Izagir of the Basque-based Uscatel team has the best time for now at just over 20 minutes. But the marquee names coming up. Saturday, March 16th, Formula One arrives for the first time on the networks of NBC Universal. The 2013 season starts down under with the Formula One Rolex Australian Grand Prix. That's Saturday, March 16th on the NBC Sports Network. Now, ML Moynard, the 31-year-old Frenchman who won stage seven of this race back in 2010, as well as the mountains classification that year. He comes up to the finish with a time of just over 20 seconds behind our leader, and that puts him in third place. Not a bad ride by Moana. He's a very good time trialist. In fact, uh, you mentioned his victory in Paris-Nice. He's only won two races uh, in his career since he turned professional back in 2010. And uh, one of those was, in fact, a stage here, though. So that's the standings at the moment. Izagir, Coppel, and Moana slotting into third place. Overlooking the gorgeous Côte d'Azur. One of the most popular tour spots in all of France. And Nero Quintana, once again for the Movistar team. Well, early on the course, kicks up pretty steep right away, but no narrow parts, no sharp ends as the road climbs away from Nice, often a tailwind for the first few kilometers. Then the course begins to bend backwards towards the sea, levels off somewhat midway through, and then kicks up steep just past the midway point. This is Arnaud Genesen of FDJ. Sixth overall last year at Perry Nice and this year at Terreno Adriatico, Joaquim Rodriguez. J Rod of the Katusha team got the stage win, but that moved Chris Froome of Team Sky into the overall race lead. So Team Sky in position to win Perry Nice today, and with a few days of Terreno Adriatico still to go, they're now in the driver's seat to win both of the two early season big stage races. Also good to see, in fact, that uh, right up there in their fifth place overall, Chris Horner, the American on Team Radio Shack. I think that will all go down to the decider in the individual time trial in Torino Adriatico, and what a battle that will be. Scarponi has just gone through the midway point with a new best time, 12.02. That's at the 5.6 kilometer checkpoint. Now, once you get past there, a little higher on the course, it's more exposed to the wind, so some of the breezes blowing in off the med can then affect the riders a lot more than it would early in the course where they're more sheltered. Just looking here at uh, Genezon, you see how the, the, the riders who are the, the climbers are sitting uh, fairly high up. One of the reasons for that is you actually want to try and open your chest up so you can get more breath and more air into, into your chest. And, when we go back to where uh, we are, thank you very much, uh, Quintana. Just look how high up he's sitting. He's almost sitting in an armchair here. But I tell you, last year he won two very, very good races. One of those was the Route du Sud, which is a preparation race for the Tour de France in the Pyrenees. And in the early part of the season, he won a hilly race in the southern part of Spain, the Tour of Mercia. 
This is Enrico Gasparotto of the Astana team, the 30-year-old Italian who last year won the Amstel Gold Race and was also on the podium finishing third in Liege Beston Liege, so had a very good Ardennes Classic season in 2012. It'll be interesting to see uh, the arrival of Michele Scarponi because he's just gone through the midway point uh, with the fastest, uh, new fastest best time there at 12 minutes and one second. But uh, I think the interesting time will be this man's time when he gets to half distance, Nairo Quintana. Now, Paul, this is kind of an anomaly. These riders don't often train for a specific race like this, say an uphill time trial. Throughout the course of the season, you'll see time trials that do have undulations and hilly sections, but there's also downhill parts as well. Today, it's strictly uphill, as Michele Scarponi now comes up to the finish line. And that's the man who started one minute ahead of him. He almost caught him, and Scarponi is going to stop the clock as the new best time, just inside of four seconds better than Izagir. So the Italian for Lampre is our new leader on the Coldez. Yes, but bear in mind all of the big names start at the back end of the uh, overall standings this afternoon. So Richie Porte is the last man to start. Before him, it's Andrew Tolansky, Sylvain Chavanel, Louis Vistra, and six riders from the end. It's the American TJ Van Garderen. Not a huge surprise. Scarponi, a good climber, has won the Giro d'Italia before. Decent time trial, so he put his skills together today, and that's given him the lead for the moment. Also a guy who's won the Giro, Dennis Menchov, the Russian for Katusha. He's also won the Vuelta a España on two occasions. He's wearing a slightly different jersey this afternoon because he is the time trial champion of Russia. Nero Quintana, pretty good pace it looks like. It's a very good pace. He's got high cadence there. You can see uh, it's, uh, there's different co kinds of style of riding a mountain like this. Some riders will try and ride in power form, as we saw Philippe Gilbert before with a big, big gear. But this man is really turning it over quickly. Michele Scarpone, the Italian, the new leader on the Col d'Ez, the uphill time trial that wraps up the race to the sun. We come back to the Russian, Dennis Menchov, on this final day, stage seven of Perry Nice, brought to you by BMC. Six miles, pretty much all uphill. And now back in the start house, Nicholas Roach of the Saxo Tinkoff team. Roach, the Irishman, currently sitting in 13th place on the general classification, 109, behind the leader, Richie Porte. Well, following in the very famous wheel marks of his father, Stephen Roach, who won the Tour de France in 1987. Christophe Lemavel, the Frenchman, just outside the top 30, nine minutes down on the general classification, and he's going to stop the clock at the finish over a minute back and in 21st place. Bear in mind that he caught and passed to Philippe Gilbert, so Gilbert was not giving his all this afternoon. He tried to get himself a stage victory yesterday, looks at the clock and says, well, next uh, up will be the Liege-Baston-Liege races for him. He really is going to try and concentrate this year on the Ardennes Classics. Current standings, Scarponi, Izaguirre and Coppel, top three. In Nisa La Bella, the hills above Nice, the area where the mountain plunges into the sea, as they say. Just a study in the difference in style here. Menchov, as you can see, is riding with a much bigger gear than Quintana. Whenever we see Quintana, Quintana uses a small gear. He turns over very high cadence, very high revolutions, up to 95, 100 revolutions per minute. This man is using that bigger gear, but then only rev revolving his pedals at around about 85 to 90 revolutions a minute. Just a difference in style and a difference in power output as well. Some riders need different bikes, different positions in order to achieve the maximum power output. As Denefil, the Austrian, comes up to the finish line. And this is going to be a good time for him. He's going to find himself inside the top five. For the moment, because I tell you what, there's going to be some fast times, I reckon, from uh, Andrew Tolansky, who's coming out with a lot of confidence this afternoon. We saw the power that Tolansky had on the Montagne de Lure. I think he made a couple of... Uh, youthful mistakes as he came up to fall towards the finish line it was overtaken by Richie Porte but here there should be no problems it's every man for himself and they're starting at approximately the same time so they'll have the same weather conditions too now the big names starting later on and this is a course where big names have won throughout history Eddie Merckx Sean Kelly Miguel Indurain they have all won on the Coldez the signature final day at Perry Nice the uphill time trial from the sea to the mountains. 
And right now, Naro Quintana has the new best time at the first intermediate checkpoint, five and a half K in. He's bettered Scarponi by six seconds at that point. Doesn't surprise me at all the way he was riding there, the uh, fluidity in his legs. He's uh, going to set that benchmark very, very high as we go a little bit further down the slopes now to rejoin Denny Menshoff. He's getting it to, to the middle part of the Coldez, if I might say so, is it just a little bit easier than the start and the uh, the top of the course. So in the middle, you can get it into a bigger gear and, and push the pace up. We're only looking at an average of 18 or 90 miles an hour in an individual time trial like this, but you push it up to about 22, 23 in the middle part of the course. Back to Nicholas Roach, who changed teams from AG2R a year ago to the Sexo Tinkoff team this year. Roach, of course, with that famous DNA, the son of Stephen Roach, who won the Tour in 1987. He's been a pro himself since 2004. Two-time national champion of Ireland. And he's finished in the top 12 of the Tour de France. He's also the godson of Sean Kelly, who has won Perry Nice more than any other rider in history. He owned the 80s in this race, winning seven straight years. Yes, that wasn't the only reason why he was called King Kelly. He was also the number one ranked rider in the world for a long time. Nicholas Roach investing in his career. He's always been on French teams since he turned professional. Now he's decided to expatriate himself. He's going to put his own personal ambitions behind him because he wants to become a key helper to Alberto Contador in the big Grand Tours. And that's why he's moved across during in the winter transfer season to Saxo Tinkoff Bank. What did you think about that move? Because he was a general classification leader at his old team. Now he's a helper for Contador. Well, I think there's a point in your career you've got to try and figure out as we look at the uh, performance there of Quintana, 11.55, it's phenomenal. There's a point in your career when you have to say, well, am I going to win the Tour de France or am I always going to finish 12th, 13th and 14th? And if that's the case, maybe better to help an Alberto Contador. So, Michele Scarponi is our leader for the moment. And the top names, the leaders of the general classification, are all still to come. Head Sweats, the world leader in performance headwear, is a proud sponsor for Perry Nice. Check out our new Head Sweats University Collegiate Collection and show your school spirit while training. Use the code PERRYNICE13 at headsweats.com and receive 25% off your next online purchase on all Head Sweats headwear. Restrictions apply. Nero Quintana coming up to the finish, and this is a very good time. He is going to take the lead as he makes that final right-hand turn on this course. Michele Scarponi's lead is going to go by the boards, and Quintana, the first man to go inside 20 minutes on the day. But look how much he's beaten Michele Scarponi by 35 seconds. This man has set the bar very, very high here this afternoon. His is the point of reference for everybody else who starts in the final 15. So we have a new leader. It is the 23-year-old Colombian, Naro Quintana. The ride of the day so far and a convincing margin over Michele Scarponi. Quintana already with one top 10 this season in Andalusia. Won a stage of the Dauphine Libre last year and now leads in the final time trial at Perry Nice. Looking here at Nicholas Roach. This is uh, the, probably one of the rare times this season where he'll be able to ride on his own account because the other races that he's going to go to, he'll become the lieutenant of Alberto Contador. And I'm sure he's uh, ridden this climb many, many times with his father, Stephen Roach, who actually uh, won Paris-Nice back in 1981. A lot of the riders in the race today live near here, train on these roads. In fact, our overall race leader, Richie Port, lives in nearby Monaco and rides this Coldez climb every other day. Well, he knows just exactly where to make the efforts. And I was starting to say just a little bit earlier on there, this is only a six-mile individual time trial, but the day starts very, very early for the riders. They go out for an early morning warm-up for a couple of hours, and then they get themselves ready in the last 45 minutes before they get into the starting ramp so that they've got the body nice and hot. So once they come down, they're up to maximum uh, wattage straight away. But, Paul, how difficult is it to acclimate? Because, as I mentioned earlier, this is something they don't often do throughout the course of the season, a straight uphill time trial. There are hilly time trials throughout a calendar season, but they also have descents and other different sorts of sections from what we see today, which is just uphill from start to finish. 
Well, it's a good point you raise there. The thing is about a climb like this, there is no respite. So if, if it wasn't Pyrenees, if this was a, an uphill time trial in the Tour de France, these guys would train on it. They would train for it specifically to try and understand the count of the kind of effort they've got to put in. Holding it at 450 to 500 watts, that's lighting up five old-fashioned light bulbs, if you like. <laughs> Uh, this is Davide Malacarne. He'd like to light up a few more bulbs than that. He was in the top three earlier this week on the general classification, but has since lost time. Now 15th on the day. The 25-year-old Italian just inside of three minutes down on the general classification. Well, he's uh, he tried to get himself up to the top. He uh, faded a bit. There's the old port down there at the bottom. It really is a beautiful part right in the heart of old Nice. Nairo Quintana with a lead of over half a minute now on Michele Scarpone. Ion Izagir holding on to a top three spot for the moment. Yep, that's going to be a very difficult time to beat 1943. A reminder, last year Bradley Wiggins did 19 minutes and 12 seconds, so people still can go a bit faster. That was Nairo Quintana with his finish a moment ago, and now this is the Croatian. Robert Kieserlovski, a 26-year-old born in the former Yugoslavia. Back at this race in 2011, he crashed underneath a truck and was trapped there for a while, needed eight stitches, and eventually pulled out of the race. Yeah, well, cast your mind back to the Tour de France last year. He was one of the riders caught out when their tacks were thrown onto the roads. Now we're having a look at the time trial champion of Slovakia, and that's Peter Velic, briefly anyway. And now Arnaud Janasson coming up to the finish line. The Frenchman for FDJ. Sixth overall in Perry Nice last year, and right now fourth in the time trial here in 2013. But look at the time gaps that the Colombian climber is putting into people. He's in fourth place, but he's lost 49 seconds. That really is a reference point there, 23 year old ride rider from Colombia as we're further down the slopes here now this is uh, Peter Velitz. Velitz is one of the riders uh, trying to ride himself up into a podium position he starts the day in seventh place overall looking for 53 seconds he's just uh, 21 seconds behind the second place rider Andrew Talansky he won the Tour of Oman a year ago and just getting started today Naro Quintana with a benchmark time of 1943, so far the only rider to go inside of 20 minutes. Now the Coldez came back as the finishing climb last year at Perry Nice. Prior to that, it hadn't been used as the final stage in the Race to the Sun since 1995. A dramatic way to end the 71st edition and right now, Nero Quintana sitting on top by a pretty comfortable margin. Sunday, March 24th, the Epic Cycle Series presented by Michelob Ultra continues with the Criterium International. Two days that will test the sprinting, climbing, and time trial skills of the world's best riders. The Criterium International begins Sunday, March 24th, right here on the NBC Sports Network. And there goes the American T.J. Van Garderen. Started this race a week ago today with hopes of winning. Now looking to climb back into the top five and still a chance for the American to finish on the podium with a good ride. He's only 20 seconds off the time of Andrew Talansky in the overall standings, and he will know that at the start of the day. He starts in sixth place, but that's not the position he wants to finish in. He is dreaming, and he came to this race, first of all, with hopes to win it, but now to try and get himself onto the podium. You just see that little red uh, meter in the middle of his handlebars there. Well, that, in fact, uh, gives him his cadence, and it also it tells him what kind of wattage he's producing out there. He's a very good individual time trial. In fact, the first time we really saw him was when he got third place in the time trial at the Criterium de Dauphiné, which is a precursor to the Tour de France. Last year, he was fourth in the World Time Trialing Championship, so he knows how to do a good time trial today. He's only competed in one other race so far this year, the Tour de San Luis in Argentina back in January. He finished second, then went back to California to continue training before coming here to Europe for his first European adventure of the season. In a race he finished fifth in a year ago. Won the best young rider competition. And he's still in a battle for that white jersey. Both he and Polanski going head-to-head -head on this final day to become the best young rider in 2013.
Well, there's only five riders now left to start. Uh, Jean-Christophe Perrault of France, uh, Louis Vister, who was second last year, Sylvain Chavanel, Andrew Talansky, and Richie Porte will be the last man out of the gate. Now Nice, the second biggest city on the French Riviera after Marseille. And Paris-Nice, the second biggest stage race in all of France behind the Tour de France. And it all comes down to this final day in the uphill time trial as we move back to TJ Van Garderen. Locked into the middle of his handlebars there in a very low profile aerodynamic position. Seriously concentrated there. Uh, Now you could hear his team director, John Lelang, saying, that's a good position, good job, TJ. Well, he's encouraging him. He wants to uh, push him to try and do something special in this individual time trial. He's in the car there, the red and, uh, white, red and black car, just on the right-hand side. And uh, interesting that uh, a lot of the teams are not using race radios. They're going to the, the old-fashioned system, old school, if you like, of using a, a microphone or a megaphone to shout out the instructions to their riders to encourage them. But this is such a violent effort. You know, his heart rate right now will be pounding at around about 190 beats a minute. And... Uh, this is, the, this is the one rider who I do believe is going to be a great Tour de France star for the future. Fifth overall in the Tour de France last year. Best young rider. I think he's going to go away with uh, a few regrets from Paris-Nice this year. Kind of like listening to a caddy talk to his golfer during a golf tournament. You can hear the director shouting the instructions. TJ listening. And it doesn't really look like a violent effort. That's because of the aerodynamic body position. He's trying to stay still in the upper body and pushing a pretty big gear. Well, Jean Lelong in that car behind, uh, he's a Belgian. In fact, he used to work for the uh, race organization uh, the, from the Tour de France, and they moved across then to run the first of all Team Phonak, then moved across to Team BMC. But he is a great enthusiast. Gets behind his riders, gives them every bit of help that they can. TJ still looking for his first ever professional stage race victory he's been close on several occasions now saying that just about a kilometer to go to a flat part which isn't really flat but it's softer than the gradient they've been facing so far well that's the part i was explaining to you before uh, it starts off very steeply then it levels off in the middle that's when you can put the gear up get a little bit of uh, speed back into the legs and there that's when you're a stronger rider when you will have the advantage over the the climbers like quintana so tj van garderen sixth to last rider of the day all of the riders now starting in two minute intervals the rest of the way through the field now Van Garderen has dropped it down onto the small chain ring and that is to try and get up his uh, cadence once again. Now Richie Port, the fifth different leader of Perry Nice at this year's edition. He'll be the last man on the road today. And now warming up in a fully yellow skin suit. Trying to win the biggest race of his career. And he's the subject of today's athlete profile presented by Michelob Ultra. I came to it a bit late, but you don't move over to Italy and leave your family all behind like I did. You weren't keen on making it. I guess that's why I gave up my, my job as a pool lifeguard, because I believe that, you know, somewhere that I could make it. Nobody has an easy road to get into a pro tour team and then ride the tour as well. To come to this team, it was a big step up. I mean, it's leading the peloton with the technology and all that side of things. It could be a bit of a hangover year this year. After the year we had last year, we basically won every general classification race apart from the Vuelta that was worth winning, so it's going to be an interesting year. I rather look to 2013 and I think I have a little bit of talent, you know, I just need a bit more luck. You know, I think the simple fact is you look at the past Grand Tours as being an Australian win, a Canadian and an Englishman and, you know, I think times are changing, so you can't really rule out going to a Grand Tour and, you know, factoring in. Now Richie Port comes to the front. His teammates did all the work early, and now Port is opening up a gap on Talansky and the others. This is his defining moment. He is going to pull into his first stage win of the 2013 season. Now does he pull on the yellow jersey as well? You know, to come here and lead it, I mean, even if I don't win the race, uh, it's brilliant just to win a stage, and um, it's nice to get a victory for this year.
He started in triathlons at a young age, then got into competitive cycling at the age of 21. Now here he is, 28, and on the verge of winning the biggest race of his career. And all week long, Paul, as the team leader for Sky, he's handled it perfectly. Really hasn't had one misstep along the way. No, well, I think with the experience he's gained riding alongside Bradley Wiggins, riding alongside Chris Froome, I think that's helped him keep nice and calm in the moments when it's been a bit precarious. Daniel Navarro coming up, 16th time for him. A minute and 19 seconds already lost in just six miles of racing. Well, Daniel Navarro sitting in 14th in the general classification has already won the Vuelta a Murcia so far this season. And now here's Jean-Christophe Perrault, first of the final five racers on the day. Interesting character back in 2008. He got himself a silver medal in the Olympic Games in the mountain bike at Beijing before deciding to move across to a row racing. That was really only because he came to the time trial championship of France uh, as a mountain biker and he beat none other than Sylvain Chavanel, who'd been the previous year's time trial champion and the winner of yesterday's stage, by the way. Now Perrault, second at the Tour of the Mediterranean earlier this season, was sixth here at Paris Nice a year ago and then went on to a top ten at the Tour de France last July. Well, he's obviously in great form because the stage that he won in the Tour of the Mediterranean was the stage to the summit of the Mont Ferrand, which is a very difficult climb, very similar to the one we're riding on here, but that was a mass start event, and that is just perched above the naval city in France of Toulon. Now following Perrault, we'll be down to Louis Vestra, Sylvain Chavanel, Andrew Talansky, and then the last man on the course, the overall leader, Richie Porte. Don't forget Louis Vestre, the big Dutchman on Team Vacon Soleil, who finished second overall in this race last year, he was also second on the individual time trial, and he only lost out by a couple of seconds to Bradley Wiggins. Well, the leaders at the top of the standings are coming up next. And that includes the overall leader in the yellow, Richie Port, who's essentially playing a home game today. He rides the Coldez sometimes three or four times a day. When he's out training, he knows every inch of the road that he will try to ride today into a win at the Race to the Sun. And our coverage of Perry Nice on the NBC Sports Network is brought to you by Michelob Ultra. This is the year you stop saying, this is the year. By Giant Bicycles, the world leader in cycling technology and craftsmanship. And by Louis Garneau. Louis Garneau is the cycling solution. Visit us at www.louisgarneau.com. This is the Epic Cycle Series presented by Michelob Ultra. And the final day of the Race to the Sun, six miles all uphill. Brought to you by BMC. Steve Schlanger with Paul Sherwin. And down to the final handful of riders. Well, just looking out over to the ocean there, I'd forgotten it was the race to the sun because it's rather a cloudy day here. Springtime weather on the Côte d'Azur. And as we pick up TJ Van Garderen, still grinding away with a pretty steady tempo. Just picking up a little bit of information there. In fact, his team manager shouting that he was already in the same time as Peter Velitz. This is uh, Perrault, and now it's the arrival of Nicholas Roach. Now, that's not a great time. Now, Nicholas Roach already outside the top 30 as he rounds the final turn on the course. He's obviously paid for what's been a very, very tough uh, Paris-Nice. So there was an awful lot of abandons yesterday. In fact, there's only 151 riders surviving uh, Paris-Nice this year. And a lot of riders dropping out yesterday on the eve of the individual time trial. So Roach is going to lose his place in the top 15 overall. And now Jean-Christophe Perrault trying to maintain his top five position, perhaps move up onto the podium. Again, second through 10th position starting the day, separated by about a half minute. So there are podium spots up for grabs here, all through the top three, as Richie Port leads Talansky and Sylvain Chavanel. 42 seconds from first down to fourth place. It's well, uh Really, Richie Port is head and shoulders above everybody else with that big time gap. But from the second place, Andrew Talansky, to the 10th place rider in the overall standings, Andre Grivko, there's only 23 seconds. It's a big, big battle this afternoon for a podium position and a lot of pride at stake. Well, Andrew Talansky has started. French television did not show him, but he is out on course. So just one man left in the start house, the leader, Richie Port, as Alberto Losada, the Spaniard, comes up to the finish line. Well, that's a pretty fair, reasonable time by him as he stops the clock uh, just inside the top 10 there. But look at the gap from first place to inside of 10th uh, place. It's over a minute's difference. 
Jean Christophe Perrault. Well, they're uh, basing this ride of Perrault on TJ Van Garderen. What the team manager was saying there in French with the at the moment he's five seconds ahead of Van Garderen in the overall in, in this in the race, and that's quite important because they were very close together. In fact, uh, only three seconds separated them at the start of the day with Van Garderen hoping to go ahead. See more body movement in Jean-Christophe Perrault, the shoulders rocking, head bobbing more than Van Garderen. No, that's quite right, and he's uh, trying to keep the tempo nice and high. He realizes it's very important for him. He finished high up in Paris-Nice last year. He started the day here in fifth place overall. But as I said, that breathing down his neck is the American time trialist, TJ Van Garderen. One man left to start, our leader, Richie Port, trying to become the first ever rider from the Southern Hemisphere to win Paris-Nice. He knows this climb probably better than anyone in the field. Again, rides it three or four times a day when he's out training on a regular basis and rides it at least every other day as well. Now Andreas Cloden, former Perry Nice winner from way back in the 2000 season. And a good time for Cloden. Looking for a top five, and he's got it for the moment. And just inside of 49 seconds behind Naro Quintana, our current leader. Yeah, so he started the day in 11th place, but a little bit too far back, uh, over a minute and six seconds down in the overall standings. But again, on the final day, a good ride in the individual time trial can turn things around. And this is the new best time at the intermediate split. Simon Spilak has gone through two seconds faster than Naro Quintana of Movistar. Quintana, the leader in the clubhouse, and so far the only man to go inside of 20 minutes for the overall ride today. He was embarrassed at the first uh, couple of days of this bike race wearing number one because he inherited that from Bradley Wiggins who was the defending champion but he decided not to participate in Paris Nice this year and you might just notice he's uh, opted for uh, the modern era because he's got a race radio in his back that will give him the information of the time splits out on the course he will know that uh, Spilak has just gone through with the fastest time and he'll have to base his ride on that ride up to half distance second overall last year this is Louis Vistra he knows this climb well He's also the time trial champion of Holland. Well, he was just two seconds behind Bradley Wiggins' winning time on this uphill time trial a year ago. Also finished second to Wiggins in the overall. Had a string of second place finishes a year ago, three days at the pod. The Tour of Belgium has two top ten so far this season. And Andrew Talansky, by the way, is again out on course. French television did not show his start, haven't shown him riding so far, but he started two minutes ahead of Richie Port and trailing him by 32 seconds in the overall standings. There you see the Australian flag on the back of Port's helmet. He's from Tasmania, part of Australia, and looking to become the first Australian winner of the Race to the Sun. Yes, yeah, so a lot of people call Tasmania the little island off the big island, although uh, let's never forget that Australia is a continent. Good, good cadence here as well. Uh, you can see he's, uh, he's really bunched up as a bike rider. He's uh, got himself uh, almost uh, into the form of a rocket at the front end of his body. A lot of riders uh, spend lots of time to try and find the most aerodynamic position that they can get themselves into. But it's a, a balance of getting aerodynamics but not losing energy and force and power. The 30-year-old Dutchman. director saying come on and sometimes the instructions are as simple as that it's not necessarily split times it's just those words of encouragement to keep the motivation up for the riders because you can actually uh, start to fall asleep you can fall asleep when you're riding a time trial and uh, you you stop because you're in pain all of the time in the individual time trial you're up at uh, 180, 190 beats a minute because your heart rate is going. You're looking at about 450 to 500 watts. It's a very difficult thing to hold on to. Uh, 
And now back to Richie Port, final man on the course. And consider the fatigue too, Paul. Remember, they did 18 climbs in the last three days leading to this final stage in the uphill time trial. And now Diego Ulissi, the Italian for Lampre. And this is a good time. Michele Scarponi is his fellow Italian and his teammate on Lampre, who had led for a while. And Ulissi goes inside of Scarponi's time and into second place. He's an impressive by rider, this young man. You know, uh, I think we're going to see a lot of him in the future. Two times a world junior road racing champion. And there, that's a, a very good individual time trial. He started the day in ninth place in the overall standings, and a good ride like that could move him even higher up. Now Louis Vestra rolls on for back on Soleil. Naro Quintana, the 23-year-old Colombian, is the leader. And everybody now either finished or out on course. Wednesday night is rivalry night on the NBC Sports Network. And this week, the Flyers head to New Jersey to deal with the Devils. It's Wednesday night rivalry presented by Coors Light. Coverage begins at 6.30 Eastern on the NBC Sports Network. Louis Vestra, third in the general classification, 42 seconds behind leader Richie Port. And starting to get much foggier out on course the further they go uphill. Well, I think this, these are the low clouds that are actually coming in, uh, peering through the clouds here. In fact, this is Simon Spilak. He went through the half distance with the new best time, faster than Quintana, only by two seconds. But has he been able to hold it over the top part of the course? That's what's important. And now he's coming up to the finish. Diego Ulissi just came in with a good ride, a second place time of 2016, and he's gonna beat that. It's not gonna be enough to take the lead, but Spilak is gonna go into second. Yeah, 28 seconds behind Quintana. Just goes to explain there, uh, just goes to show you how fast Quintana was over the last part of the course. And that was when the climb started to get steeper again, much more grippy, which suited the little Colombian climber. But you notice uh, most of the riders today, they were just riding their normal road racing bikes. Maybe one or two have got clip-on bars at the front. So Lampre with two riders in the top four, but Movistar's Naro Quintana, so far the only man inside of 20 minutes. He's the leader, and our first look at Sylvain Chavanel, yesterday's stage winner, and the man wearing the green jersey because he leads the points competition coming into the final day. Well, that's a battle that go right down to the, the finish line as well because between uh, Sylvain Chavanel and Andrew Talansky, there are only 15 points in that classification. I'm sure that Sylvain Chavanel would like to get himself the win in the green jersey points competition, which he's battling against the American for. What do you think about Chavanel in an uphill time trial? Chevrolet's always good in an individual time trial, uh, whether it's uphill or whether it's on the flat. Uh, that's really his speciality. He's been uh, champion of France in the individual time trial uh, several times, champion on the road as well. But I think when you ride an uh, uphill time trial like this in the early part of the season, it's a question of how good is the form. And we've seen that this man's form has been meticulously prepared right from the very get-go. The prologue time trial, he finished in second place, losing out by hundreds of a second. And every day he was aggressive, every day he was looking for the move, and he was rewarded yesterday with the win. If you're looking for some reference points for Richie Port, last year in this Coldez final time trial uphill at Perry Nice, he was 28. 144 behind Brad Wiggins, but the circumstances were much different. He had been working the entire race as a helper to Wiggins. He was tired. He wasn't going for the win, so it's hard to use that as a yardstick considering how much is at stake today. Well, he wouldn't have had the motivation last uh, last year because he knew that uh, Perry Nice was uh, in the bag for his team leader, Bradley Wiggins. He would have just ridden this time trial just to get it done and dusted and out of the way. This is a different ball game. He's got a yellow jersey on his shoulders. He knows if he can ride well in the individual team, time trial then he's going to win Paris Nice and be the first Australian ever to do that and he may well want to try and ride with pride to try and get himself the victory on the final stage as well as you've said so many times this is pretty much in his back garden Sylvain Chavanel the 33 year old Frenchman and now Peter Velitz coming up to the finish and he's going to go outside the top 10 National time trial champion of Slovakia. 
and 17th for the moment over a minute back of Quintana yeah well he was a couple of years ago the world under 23 road racing champion a seriously talented bike rider but I think he's just come unstuck a little bit in the last part of this time trial he was second overall in the Vuelta España back in 2010 and perched on the hills here just above Nice one of the famous citadels of France Sylvain Chavanel with that stage win yesterday now has three career stage wins at Paris Nice same amount at the Tour de France and back to Richie Port in the yellow skin suit. Port was fourth in the World Championship time trial back in 2010. Did have time trial wins two years ago in both the Tour of Denmark and the Castilla y Leon race in Spain. So he's a good time trialist as we finally see American Andrew Talansky starting the day 32 seconds behind Port. It looked to me as if that time was uh, just outside of 11.45. Uh, as TJ Van Garderen now comes up to the finish and has a chance to move into second place here. Simon Spielach, a time of 20.11. TJ Van Garderen is going to hit the line as the second best time of the day. 24 seconds behind Quintana, but second place for the American. But uh, bear in mind, Quintana is not going to threaten the position of TJ Van Garden in the overall standings. He will uh, have to wait a long time now to see if that ride was good enough to move him up into the top three. This is Tolansky, and uh, he's, gonna, he's actually opted to ride a time trial bike here this afternoon. That's a very uh, risky thing to do, I'd have to say. Oh, check this out. Andrew Tolansky at the 5.6 interval has the best time by six seconds over Perot. Well, that is very, very impressive, and uh, he said that he wanted to come out and ride well here this afternoon. There's only one rider left on the course now behind him, and that, of course, is Richie Port. His time is going to be very interesting. Polanski said he felt like he could win the time trial today. He needs some help from Port to go backwards to win the overall race, but so far, so good for the American. Down to the final few riders, and this is Jean-Christophe Perrault coming up to the finish. Naro Quintana, so far the only rider to go inside of 20 minutes. Perrault is going to be the second, and he is going to be just outside the time of Quintana and into second place. That is an impressive ride there. He wanted to ride faster than TJ Van Garden. He was concerned about the American leapfrogging him and the overall standings. Well, that won't happen today. Here is Richie Port, and he has gone through the intermediate checkpoint with the new best time ahead of American Andrew Tolansky. By 21 seconds, he's not showing uh, any fear or trepidation, just concentration on that face of Richie Port here this afternoon. As he looks up the road, he now knows he's only got around about four and a half kilometers to write his name into the record books. So a big gap at the top and at that interval five and a half kilometers into the course six miles altogether that's 9.6 K so halfway through Richie Port looking good adding to his margin remember he started the day with a 32 second lead over Talansky and here is the American wearing the white jersey again because he is the best young rider in the race it doesn't look quite as solid as uh, Richie Port did. He's rocking his shoulders a fraction at the top. Uh, bear in mind, he's only 24 years of age, and he will start to get uh, much stronger when he's got a couple of grand tours in his legs. He's got a long way to go to develop, but we can see him being a great rider in the future. We've gone through the checkpoint now, the checkpoint's at 5.6 kilometers to go. We're also now getting to the rather steeper part of this course. So Port is on the left, Talansky on the right. Last year at the Tour de Romandy, Andrew Talansky beat Richie Port by 17 seconds in a climbing time trial at Cran Montana. There was, however, a downhill section in that time trial. There's not one here today. And you can see the face of Andrew Talansky. He has given it everything he has. Richie Port, a bit more composure, riding a steady tempo. And ahead of both of them is Sylvain Chavanel in the green jersey of the points leader. As he started the day in third place overall, uh, he looked to me as if he was struggling a little bit. He had to get out of his saddle to keep that big gear of his turning over. However, when you look at Richie Port, you can see the fluidity in his motion. 
top part of his body is reasonably rock solid there so that means he's transmitting all of his energy down into the pedals and at three kilometers to go he's turning that into speed and sylvain chavanel who was battling for not only a podium spot but for the points competition so many things up for grabs at a stage race like this. You have the overall general classification, you have the points, best young rider, king of the mountains, and a podium in the overall. Well, there's 25 points available for the points competition. Uh, Louis Vestra not riding as he did last year. In fact, uh, fading quite a bit over the second part of the course. Surprising, considering how well he rode a year ago, finishing second to Bradley Wiggins by only two seconds. Today, he's outside the top 15. And he's lost himself over a minute, a minute and seven seconds to be exact. I don't think he'd be too pleased with that, and I would think he will tumble down the overall classification tonight, and he will get overtaken by Jean-Christophe Perrault. Riding up to the limestone cliffs on the Col d'Ez. Port on the left, Talansky on the right. Andrew Talansky starting two minutes ahead of Richie Port. The American had the best time at the intermediate time check until Port came through and blew that away. Well, Talansky is going through all kinds of pain here this afternoon. Uh, he really is a proud young rider at 24 years of age. I think it's his pride actually lost him the stage uh, when we went up to Montaigne de because he wanted to blow everybody away, but just could not handle Richie Port. Softer section where Sylvain Chavanel gets up out of the saddle for just a moment. And now half a kilometer away from the finish. Well, this is when it really flattens out once you get up to the top. You can see he's on the large chain ring there. He's almost got it right over to the right-hand side. So he's pretty much close to the largest gear that he's got. While further down, Richie Port is still on the steeper inclines of the Coldez. Wearing that number one. Started the race in place of the defending champion Brad Wiggins for Team Sky. Now Sylvain Chavanel about to hit the finish. Outside the top five and Chavanel into seventh and almost 38 seconds behind our leader Quintana. Well, that means he'll get himself some points. Uh, you know, he was being challenged by Andrew Talansky for the uh, green jersey points competition. And I think he's done enough there to win that competition. But what's it going to do to his position in the overall standings? Quintana, Perot, and TJ Van Garderen right now top three in the uphill time trial. But look at the gaps. Uh, Quintana has done a phenomenal ride. In fact, I think there's only one person uh, or two people who can beat him on this course. Talansky is one of them. And, of course, Richie Port is the other because those riders have gone through the uh, intermediate time check with first and second fastest times. Andrew Talansky said coming in that aerodynamics would be a bigger factor than most people thought on an uphill time trial, was really tinkering with his bike, talking to the mechanics, trying to come up with something special in a setup for today's race. And now inside of a half a kilometer away from the finish. So Talansky about to make that final right-hand turn and come into the line, looking to better the time of Nauro Quintana and take the lead. Talansky has some time to work with here as he comes up to the finish line and the American moves into the lead by over four seconds. Well, he slipped four seconds off the time of the Colombian climber, Nairo Quintana. That is a fine performance, but at the half distance point, Richie Port was 21 seconds faster than Andrew Talansky. Has Richie Port been able to contain, contain that over the final few kilometers? Now it's 1,000 meters to go for Richie Port, and he still doesn't look like a mindshut man showing any signs of weakness here. Just over half a mile from the finish for Richie Port. Andrew Talansky, the current leader. And remember, Port started the day with a lead of just over half a minute on Talansky, so he has a margin to work with, but he has been laser-like in his focus for this time trial on his home roads and a hill, a course he knows intimately well. As you can see now, we've got to the flatter part. We're just uh, looking around each one of these corners for the finishing line. He's up onto his big chain ring as well now as he got himself right over to the smaller sprockets on the right-hand side. Over these final few hundred meters, he's going to pick it up to uh, 40 kilometers an hour, 25 miles an hour of racing, when most of this climb, he's only been doing 17 or 18 miles an hour. Richie Port 
The 28-year-old won on the Montan de Lure Summit finish a few days ago. That's when he moved into the yellow jersey as overall race leader for this very powerful Team Sky. And now look at this time as he comes around the final turn. He is going to win his second stage of this year's race. And this is going to be the biggest overall win of his career. Richie Port wins the time trial and Perry Nice overall. 22 seconds. Look at his eyes here just as he comes up to the finishing line. He's looking at the clock, which is on the banner over the finishing line, and that's when he starts to smile a fraction because he knows he's not only won Paris Nice, but he's won the final stage as well. And that's the way to do it, putting the exclamation point on his performance at the Race to the Sun. On this final day, Port leads Talansky and Quintana in the top three. TJ Van Garderen rides to fifth place. While on the backside of the top 10, Ion Izagir finishes just over a minute back. He was the leader at one point early on for the Uskatel team. Well, the important thing is that we know who's first and second in this bike race. It's Richie Port who's won overall. Andrew Tolanski is second. The big question mark is who is going to walk away with a third place finish. <laughs> Now Richie Port was nervous about taking over for Brad Wiggins when this race started. Pat on the back for Andrew Talansky, two young riders with two impressive performances this week in France. Richie Port winning with poise, patience and composure. We'll hear from him and see all of the jersey presentations when we come back. Coverage of Perry Nice on the NBC Sports Network has been brought to you by Michelob Ultra. This is the year you stop saying, this is the year. By BMC Switzerland, manufacturers of the Grand Fondo GF01, the ultimate spring classics bike. See more at www.bmc-switzerland.com. And by American Classic. Like us on Facebook and see more from the American leader in tubeless technology. Now time for our competitive cyclist ride of the day. And take a guess, Paul. Well, I have to say, Richie Port did a phenomenal ride in the individual time trial. And to put it up as a reference, when he came up to the line, he was only four seconds slower than Bradley Wiggins was 12 months ago. Richie Port, the competitive cyclist ride of the day. A guy who wore the Malia Rosa, the pink jersey at the Giro d'Italia a few years ago, wound up winning the white jersey as best young rider of that race. But today, it's the yellow jersey of Perry Nice that is the biggest jersey of his young career so far as he wins the overall. First ever rider from the Southern Hemisphere to win Perry Nice. As we take a look at the final overall standings, 71st edition, and Richie Port leading Andrew Talansky and Jean Christophe Perot, who takes up the final podium spot. TJ Van Garderen moves up one spot from last year, finishing fourth. Peter Bellitz rounds out the top 10. Andreas Clote, a former Perry Nice winner, also in the top 10, finishing ninth this year. And the other Americans finishing outside the top 100. Eight Americans overall starting Perry Nice this year, two dropped out along the way. Now Richie Port wins this race, Paul, and now he will go back to being a helper for Bradley Wiggins and in a support role at the Giro d'Italia this year as Wiggins goes for the Giro title. Just looking at the lion there, that's the same lion that they hand out for stage victories at the Tour de France and that lion is the symbol of LCL or Le Credit Lyonnais Bank of France who have been a long time sponsor of the Tour de France and of course of this race too. Now riding for this very powerful Team Sky, there was a lot of pressure coming in on Richie Port but he handled it well to get the win. Yeah, I cannot believe it. It's, uh, you know, it's the fourth time I've raced this um, race and um, three times I've been here. I've had not very happy memories and then uh, to come here and the team said, you know, I was the leader, which uh, last year I was the leader in Algarve and I won there too. So 
<laughs> it's a great team and, um, you know, I think we've showed it this week. It's um, it's not really just me. It was, you know, the other seven guys there that just put it all on the line for me. And, uh, you know, I'm over the moon. Win Parry Nice. It's incredible. Joining the likes of Eddie Merckx, Sean Kelly and Miguel Indurain as guys who have won the final time trial on the Col Dez and won the overall at Perry Nice as well. And the green jersey of the points competition goes to Sylvain Chavanel. Well, he got the lead in that competition yesterday with his stage victory. And here, I have to say, it's been one of the most aggressive riders throughout this whole week of racing. The 33-year-old Frenchman who won the penultimate stage, wins the green jersey, just ahead of the American Andrew Talansky and Richie Port, who has to settle for a consolation prize in the yellow. He's third in the points classification this year at Perry Nice. And the polka dot jersey, mountains classification winner, is Johan Schopp, who got into the breakaway yesterday, and that secured the mountains competition for him. We should have realized he was going to be a very good climber because last year he was the winner of the Tour of Utah uh, just before the USA Pro Challenge in Colorado. And that might help his IAM cycling team get a wild card berth to the Tour de France this summer. With Richie Port finishing second in the mountains classification and landing in the white jersey as the best young rider Andrew Talansky the 24 year old American battling for yellow all the way down to the final day but still a victory for him yes it is a victory for him and uh, he's learned a lot 